All right, good morning, everyone. Um, so we said we are going to have a 10 o'clock start time and it's 10 a.m. Eastern. We have our guest speakers with us and of course, persons continue to join us in the room. So, I would like to get us started promptly um because I want I'm sure that everyone has commitments on this Saturday. So again officially thank you very much for joining our first webinar of next level performance prepare to perform. My name is Gavin Warwick. I am the CEO and founder of Next Level Performance. We do have on the call with us uh, Lincoln Charles, um, our strength and condition and uh, vice president, uh, another main stakeholder in next level performance. Um, we also have Coach Larry Sandy, uh, who's based in Atlanta and spearheads our recruiting process. Uh, he's a person who has worked in the collegiate system and continues to work in the collegiate system and understands the, the, the and, and has the knowledge in terms of what it takes and putting our young aspiring athletes in front of coaches um, with the opportunity to earn their scholarships or scholarship opportunities. Uh, we also have Mozart McKenzie, who's a member of our team as well, another vice president of, and he manages our digital arm. He's the person responsible for for capturing um, and ensuring that everyone and the data that is being put out there for our athletes uh, under the next level umbrella is of high quality and a very high standard that meets the needs and criteria of uh, coaches and scouts that are recruiting in the recruiting process. Joining us today, we have both Abigail Thomas, um, so I'm saying Abigail Thomas, Abigail Johnson. Same. Johnson, give me one second to just set up my um, my my um video, and I'm yes, I'm here with you guys. Good morning. Right, and we also have Emmanuel. Uh, it's always a it's, it's always a tongue twister. It, it, Rod Lynch. Um, from Central Gwinnett High School. He is uh, um, a counselor of the NCAA and understands why we are here today is really to talk about what is the requirements and just to get an overview for parents, players who have joined us today is really for, you all, for us to get an understanding. Where do we start? How do we start mapping this process? What are the check boxes that we need to really start this process if we are considering being the athlete, considering wanting to get a scholarship or being a parent who is interested in getting their child um, or guardian a scholarship opportunity. So um, I will, so do, that is really the, 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 the panel who will discuss. I will jump quickly into our presentation today. And that is um, the introduction, which we just did. I will give you an overview on the next level platform. Um, and of course, what you all all here to hear about is the introduction to the SAT with um, Abigail Johnson and then the introduction to the NC requirements by Emmanuel. So I hope you all are locked in. You have your drink of water. Uh, the intention is this call is or this webinar is going to be really about just about. 90 minutes, one football game for all the footballers in the house. Um, no extra time. That's the intention. No penalties. Um, see, you see, for those local footballers, the St. Anthony's overcome QRC in the you know, on penalties. So we don't want to go into penalties today. That's that's not the intention. Right? So um next level. What is next level really? The intention of our we have been established, we've established really this year um, in terms of to the general public, but the organization established uh, 
in mid of last year and and he would have done a lot of fine tuning and tweaking to what we wanted the product of next level to perform right and the intention really and truly is your vision is really to take student athletes to their next level of performance maybe college maybe training maybe coming from rehabilitation um, not everyone is going to get a scholarship and that is not our intention yes that is our drive and our passion but we understand that there's only a level a certain level of percentage of persons or kids uh, will get scholarship opportunities and therefore this the intention really and truly is a holistic approach to sport development and sport in Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean and therefore it's really about taking athletes, student athletes to the next level of performance, maybe as I say, strength and conditioning, rehabilitation. Uh, we exist to help every student athlete take their sporting career to the next level through our persistent laser focus and dedicated training professionals program and data with the aim of bridging the gap. So really and truly, um, and we will we will touch a little bit, I will touch a little bit on it, and I will also let uh Lincoln jump in um at the very end to to kind of touch on some of the technology that we, we we plan to use and we are using currently in our next level system. Right. Um, so what we really do is that we, we document at its physical improvement by capturing the individual by data and footage. So and, and reality is, and I will tell everybody this over the COVID period, uh, many and Emmanuel, I'm sure we'll touch on it. Many colleges, universities would have scaled back on their on their budgets, traveling budgets for their scouting coaches, head coaches, assistant coaches, um, going out and looking at athletes. Um, based on travel restrictions, based on budget cuts, sponsorship, whatever you call it, they it was scaled back. And what they would have gone towards or leaned towards is looking at and 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 really assessing student athletes through data and video content. And what if they had 100 athletes that they were looking for, let's say 20 athletes they were looking at, they would have looked at the videos, narrowed it down to two or three, and then may physically go out and travel to look at these two or three athletes. What that has done is, and, and even with the opening of COVID, college, because the model worked, and both universities and colleges have been able to actually scale back um, in terms of spend, it has opened up a window for Caribbean athletes, uh, Trinidad and Tobago athletes to be able to be seen and be visible, but it has to be done the right way. It has to be done with verified stats. It has to be done with correct footage. It has to be done with understanding what the needs are of the student athlete. And that is our role and responsibility. So not just data capturing, which we're talking about, um, the, the information that we use is actually put on to build a professional profile for athletes um, to be verified on our platform. And currently, as we have a number of athletes in our system currently that we are documenting and mapping to be able to put out on the 2024-25 market um, that we have started already getting traction for some. But the idea is really when we build these profiles, uh, you get all of your information under one roof, meaning your, your full data, your full, if you're for, for, for jump, sprint, um, you name it, all of the different testing we do. If you have articles, if you have video content, your transcripts, all of that information is now housed in one click of a button that you could also just share. Um, the idea is it gives athletes and coaches direct contact to each other. Um, the norm in, in locally Caribbean and Trinidad and Tobago has been a coach knows somebody and we try to make that connection. And even in some cases is come and play for my club or I have an opportunity for you. What we are trying to do with the platform is the more you want it and the more you work for it is the greater possibility that you could create an opportunity. So yes, we have created a platform that will house the data but you and we will try to assist you and push based on your needs and, and the consultation, we will push to get you an opportunity. But you as a parent, you as a child, uh, as a student athlete, you could now take your profile and share it. It's not, it's not limited to 
our platform alone. You can now share it. It's how bad you want it. It's how much you want to share it. And we will assist in that process. Um, of course, we also, in that whole process, yes, we do the data capturing, but we as well, we, we also provide the sports therapy, the performance training, the testing. We put all those different things, rehabilitation, because we understand that we need to take athletes from one point A to point D. Um, a coach might be able to take you from point A to point B to point C, but fine-tuning your skill sets from basketball, football, volleyball, track and field. Um, we have specialists in-house and who we have partnered with that will we could have consultations and say, okay, when we when we assess you or we have done your when we have done your profiling or we have captured the data, we, we, we there's there, there's a gap here. We think you could work here on your explosion, on your on your start out to the blocks, on your finishing, or your short touches on the back, on the football, those things, and then we could make recommendations and get you into programs or partners that we work with and we are affiliates of our program. The idea is really and truly, I mean, you may be already in some instances working with skill development trainers. We are not saying stop or change to us. What we want to do is have those consultations, make sure that you're on the right path, make sure there's a trajectory that we could see that when we put you on the next level platform and we position you as a, a central defender, a striker, a forward in basketball, a, a spike, whatever it is, we a uh, hundred meter run, a two hundred meter run, whatever it is, that the information that we are putting out there and the athlete that we're saying that we're putting out there is the actual potential of the athlete. What we don't want is athletes, um, saying that we pro providing an athlete and then when that athlete reach out there is not what the coach expected and and gives the the next level brand a whole different look and feel and of course the idea is we want coaches to be continuously coming to the platform to see more and more Trinidad and wider Caribbean athletes. Um, these are some of the services that we offer, physical therapy, videography, sessions, sports specific performance training, personal training, sports stats data, functional return because a lot of, and I will touch on sports stats. I mean a lot of persons don't know what they how much distance they're covering on the football field. What's your field goal percentage in basketball? Um, what for high jumpers or long? What is my 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 power ratio? They don't understand this, and that's what some of the coaches may ask so that they could understand. Okay, in year one, in 2022, 23, this is what I was doing. They would be all right, 23, 24. Okay. So coaches will see that trajectory and say, well, okay, yes, I could take a chance with our program, with our strength and condition with our nutrition in our program i think he has or he, him or her will have the ability to of course we do sports consultation and profile development so you may have all of your your personal trainer you're on a nutritionist yeah but you just don't know we could have that consultation sit with you and say okay all right good yes we are not saying we're going to come and take it over no our own is better if you think you're in the right place for your son daughter as an athlete then that's fine. Let we will work with, with, with that and position the athlete, the student athlete, where we need to position him. Um, we have an affiliate program that works. Um, this is and this is just to show that this is just an idea of what persons do um for, for people that, that come in uh in terms of providing opportunities and, and recommendations for persons coming on the platform. Um and benefits of the platform itself. So we do have a website. And then we have developed a mobile app in, in consultation in the early stages. We would have done a website and a lot of the younger generation, um, they want to use the app. They want to be able to update their information. Of course, it's really a social network platform for athletes and coaches. It allows students and athletes to create their own athletic content in one hub, as we mentioned. Certified coaches can connect directly with you. So we have coaches. We have been putting on athletes. We have been sending data directly to coaches now in our early stages. But the intention is that those coaches will register on our platform um, because they will come back, because they have gotten a good footballer, because they have gotten a good basketball or track and field. They're going to come on the site. They're going to register because they know we don't have to travel. We don't have to spend money money to get into, to go to, 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 to Trinidad or go to Suriname or go to Guyana. I could go on the platform and still capture those same athletes and have conversations with them, right? 
You could share your profile, one click, you could share it across platform, WhatsApp, Facebook, emails. And once anybody clicks on your on that link, they get your full detail. Um, of course, real-time notifications. If a coach views an athlete profile or somebody else views an athlete profile, you actually get a notification. And why is that important? That is very important because you want, if somebody views my profile as an athlete, I should be able right there and then to say, coach, hopefully you saw what you like. Um, let me know if you, and then you make that direct contact with that person because they have viewed your profile. That's what you want to me. I mean, my background is strategic marketing. I mean, I've studied uh, marketing, strategic sales. And if you look at the buyer process now, you've gone away from multiple clicks to one click by now. And it's, it's really the same model that we would have used to develop the, the this platform. The intention is once we have the engagement of the coach or athletic director, assistant coach, whoever it is, that you could now communicate and make that contact and, and promote and market yourself as an athlete or parent who's willing to promote their, their kids, right? Of course, coaches could track your 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 activity um in that messaging capability as I just mentioned you could get you actually get verified so once we at next level coach Lincoln myself Larry we would have done or we would have put on any combines any um basketball football any of the combines and we could verify the information or we meaning that you're going through your your volleyball season your track and field well not I wouldn't use track and field but football, basketball, or we could verify that information. We verify the athlete. And that means when we are promoting or pushing the athletes out to the wider diaspora, we're encouraging coaches to look at the certified athletes because the platform is open for anyone to register. You could actually register now. Anybody could register as an athlete, but you would not be verified because we at Next Level can't verify the information. The only time we will give you that blue tick, which is the social and the digital era, we will then coaches will know, okay, let me look at the verified athletes because, and that will only come over time. That will only come over time, right? I know I kind of take in a lot of time, but let me just quickly. So let me just show you a quick video here um, with some of the technology that we use so that you get a, a better understanding of what happens. Um, and this is just a short sample. I am Coach Charles, a strength and conditioning specialist, and I had Malik Jack and Athlete today who plays basketball. And what we did with this cat is actually put him in the correct position in a biomechanical movement pattern to be able to correct him. So what we did first is get him in the undesirable position where he wasn't able to execute a perfect shot. And then we fixed him, we came back, we adjusted him on the cat, and he was able to execute consistently so the cat is basically designed to help you in all movement patterns. It's not a data collection a tool, but it also helps you whether it's a track athlete, a basketballer, footballer, or any athlete. We could correct your movement patterns and get you in the right position to do the application of this work. Right, so that's just, again, that's just a, sample of one of the tools that we have gone out there and find because the idea and I'll, I'll, I'll ask Lincoln to jump in and give a little more detail in it. I wouldn't want to, 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 to preempt it, but the idea is we, we use technology to guide all of the, the initiatives that we do um, because we want to be able to showcase the data. What coaches want to see is the data that we've collected and the trajectory more importantly of what is happening, All right? Um, so this is just an idea of persons who we would have gotten out in. So as I said, we really established and went to, I would, we use the word market or launched in, in January of this year. Um, and we have been able to get as many, and, and yes, we, we would see a lot of basketball um, and we, because we have, we, we purposely focus on basketball because of our skill set. Uh, but that allowed us that into the, to, to the scholarship opportunities allowed us into colleges, universities that now 
has opened up their whole athletic department. So we now access to their football teams, um, their hockey teams, you name it, their track and field teams. And that is why we have um, aggressively gone behind footballers, um, track and field athletes, and as well as volleyball and rugby, and rugby players in over the last few months. So that in 2024 into 25, that our intention is to really drive and get more athletes across different sports and disciplines. And again, the idea is really to make the hub next level, the hub for Caribbean athletes, not just in basketball, not just in football, not just in, in, in volleyball, not just in rugby, not just in track and field, it's across. So any college coach, university, in, at NCAA, JUCO, NAIA, you name it, they were looking for an athlete. They should be able to say, let me come and check um, what next level has to offer. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that this is a class of what we deem class of 20, 24, 25. Um, you'll see some familiar faces for some of you who will be on the call and then you'll see some unfamiliar faces. Um, we do have some kids from Suriname and some other kids from French Guyana who actually will be in this, in this, uh, in this 20, 24, 25 class, meaning that the, it does not say that we will get everybody. And I want to make that very clear. There is no guarantee for scholarship. There's certainly no guarantee. And I'm, and I'm sure, I am sure Abby will touch on it as well as Emmanuel. We could try to put you in front as many coaches and that's our intention with the right data, with the right footage, with the right connections and then parents and more importantly, the student athlete has to do their part. So please download, be sure to download the app. Um, make sure if, I mean, we are, we, we actually had the, the iPhone app up, um, but we had an issue with it. There was a bug on it that we had to pull it down. iPhone pulled it down for us um, to review. So hopefully it should be up in about the next week or two. But it is at the Android is up. It is the website is accessible. We need everybody. If you're not registered on, on Next Level as yet, go with the, the application now it's free um this is our contact for information be sure to download all the information um ask any questions these are our emails you would have had you would have received an email directly from my inbox um for this webinar feel free to reach out to me these are the contact me first one 682 2323 is my mobile um the next level number the other number is my mobile number feel free to whatsapp call get any information that you need um so that's it from on my end i will now hand you over to abby who will take you through a little bit of sat um how are we going for time 20 minutes yeah man we, we a little thing but we need it. We I really needed to set the tone for everybody to understand. More importantly, the next level platform and where we're not just taking Trinidad and Tobago at least, but the Caribbean wider diaspora. You just have the persons on this call have been able, um, have been able to be privy to to the to to. The next level platform and your first market. The first thing is your first market. Um, and, and as I said, we have been able to get seven kids out this year. Um, if if and I'm sure Abby, you could touch on it, or Emmanuel could touch on it. Getting seven scholarships in a year, um, in from one year is, is a massive accomplishment. And what I'll be very honest, our goal is we have set a target for 20 in 2024. Um, and we want to surpass that. We want to just meet it, we want to surpass that goal. So Abby, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I will come back in at the very end. So, Abby, I think you should be able to share there now. Um, over to you. Hello, good morning. And once again, thank you all so much for having me. Um, checking everyone can hear me just well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm hearing you. I think okay, that's... great. Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm just gonna give a very brief presentation on um and it's not just SATs, but just on the whole academic context of being a student athlete, because the first word in student athlete is, of course, student. So that is an important perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and begin my presentation. All right. Everyone can see the presentation. Yes. Yes, yes Abby. Yes, yes. Because okay, great. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. So this presentation is on... 
the introduction to NCAA requirements from an, the academic considerations, all right? And again, my name is Abigail Johnson, and I am the lead consultant at my own company, which um, specializes in SATs and admissions consulting. So what are we going to be going through today? I'm going to give a brief introduction. Then I'm going to talk about the anatomy of a student athlete. Then we will talk about what test optional means, because I know a lot of students have questions about test optional. And we will answer the question, should you take the SATs? And then we'll give some brief takeaways and that will be it, all right? Um, so who am I? I thought I'd introduce myself. I am a graduate of St. Joseph's Convent, Port of Spain. I was awarded an open scholarship from the government of Toronto Tobago and I studied at Princeton. Now, you will see in here that there is no athletics because I have two left hands, but I am always in such a... um such awe of student athletes and how much energy and effort they put in and how talented they are. I think we have so many talented students here. And my experience, oh, you'll see my experiences there. So what does it mean to be a student athlete? You have to be all rounded both on and off the field. So that means you have to have a stellar school record. As many of you know, um, one, well, I hope many of you know, when you are um when a coach selects you for a school, you also have to be granted admission to the institution. And to be admitted to a university in the United States, all schools will require that you submit your transcripts. And what are transcripts? Those are the records of your grades from the past four years prior to you um applying. So that would mean that it's not just your last year of school, it's the grades from the four years prior. So it definitely is very important that regardless of where you are in the stage of preparing to go to university, that you make sure to have consistently good grades. And even if you're not where you'd like to be, schools recognize when students improve. So a strong school record is really important. The other thing you need is good recommendations. And good recommendations come from your coaches and also from your teachers, right? Coaches and administrators want to know that you're a student that is a team player, somebody who is respectful, somebody who shows up on time, somebody who comes to class, and somebody who they know is going to add value to their school team. And of course, they want the amazing statistics. And I know that Gavin would have covered at length all the ways in which Next Level can help you showcase yourself in terms of the statistics. So know that being a student athlete is not just about your your skills on the field but also your skills as and the type of individual you are off the field okay so many students may have heard that after covid during covid um ncaa made the sats optional and they decided as of this year to make tests optional going forward so many students are now asking well if it's test optional why do I need to still consider taking standardized tests like the SATs? And there's also the ACT, which is not as common in Trinidad, but some of you may have heard of that, right? And I want to tell you guys some considerations you should have in um, when considering tests optional. The first thing you should consider is that admissions is a holistic process. They are looking at who you are. They're looking at, as I mentioned before, your grades, your extracurriculars, your leadership, your recommendations and the essays you submit. So tests are just one part of that process. And test optional means that whether or not you submit tests, schools are still able to assess you. Now, even if schools are so that, so the important thing to understand is that test optional means that there are other parts of your um file that schools can use to make an admissions decision, right? Um, what does this mean if you decide not to take a test, such as the SATs, is that your grades become that much more important. As I would have spoken to before, you're submitting a transcript of the past four years of your academics, yes? So if you're not choosing the SATs, right, then your school grades become important. And another thing that becomes very important are your results at CSEC and CAPE. And I, you know, we wanted to make sure that today's an introduction, but what I can tell you is that the NCAA does know what CSEC is and does know what CAPE is and has a very specific standards as to what is considered um, as acceptable with CSEC and CAPE. So do know that if you choose not to take the SATs, 
your um, admissions officer will be looking that much more closely at your grades and at your local exam results. And of course, so does everything else. Remember, I would have mentioned earlier, your recommendations become that much more important. What does the school counselor have to say about you? And the school counselor in this instance would be the um, somebody in the administration, be it the dean or the vice principal who can speak to how you are in school. Are you a student that was in attendance regularly? Are you a student that you know had any behavioral issues? Are you a student that they could recommend wholeheartedly? So just remember that test optional does not mean that you know, you don't have, you can or cannot take tests, but just know that there's so many other things that are going to come into play and that get even more heavier weighing should you choose not to con um, to submit SATs or other standardized tests. Okay. So now let's get to the million dollar question. Should you take the SATs? Um, so the most important considerations are, are my grades competitive? Do I have time to focus on the SATs? And what is the best plan for me? So the SATs are offered multiple times throughout the year. There are sittings in March, in May, in August, in October, in November, and there's actually a sitting coming up next week, Saturday in December. So for some students, you have to be strategic about when you take the SATs, because if you're in season, I don't have to tell you what the life of an in-season athlete is like, from games to training to practice. It can be a lot of... um energy required from you. So you have to be strategic about when you take the SATs or whether it lines up with your um, availability. And the best plan for you, every student is different. And you have to look at um, SAT scores, by the way, are valid for five years. So you don't have to take the SATs. You don't have to wait until your final year to take the SATs. You can attempt it multiple times. In fact, most students take the SATs at least twice. So it is something to consider um, as I said, as part of your plan. And it is something that you want to look at as early as possible. And when I say as early as possible, I would say coming to the end of Form 5 because the content on the SATs is similar to that of CSEC or Form 5 level math and English. All right, so what are some of the pros of taking the SATs? So they can qualify you for other scholarships. Um, many schools have merit scholarships that are based on your academic performance. And one way for schools to assess your academic performance is using your SAT score. And if you get a merit scholarship, that will actually make you more attractive to coaches because that does mean that you are getting funding from other um, parts of the institution, which means the coaches can, you know, admit you and save some of their budget because um, I'm sure this will be covered, but coaches have a specific budget for their team. And if you can say, hey, I'm coming in with X amount of funding from my academics, that will only be a plus for coaches. The other thing is that um, you may or may not know that while you are in school, coaches, I mean, schools and the NCAA have minimum requirements for student athletes. You do have to maintain a specific GPA. So if a coach knows coming in that you're a student that has strong academics, they're less worried about you having to struggle with students, with being a student athlete. And of course, the thing about SATs is that they're offered frequently throughout the um, year and you get your results within two weeks. So if you're speaking to a coach, you know, you may not have your CSEC or your CAPE results in hand despite having taken the exam, but you may be in preparation for CSEC or CAPE. But if you take the SATs, you can have a score in hand to say, this is what I'm working with, which can help advance the conversation. Now, of course, there are some cons. If you're somebody who gets really nervous taking tests, SATs may not showcase your skills as well, in which case, as I've said many times already, you want to make sure you have strong academics otherwise. And I would have touched on this already, but it is difficult to balance studying when in season. I have some students I have right now who are my SAT kids, and they have been playing in intercall, and it has been really difficult for them. So it is something to consider because, you know, you're coming from practice, you're, you're playing games, you're exhausted and you have to study as well. So it is something to balance. And of course, the SATs are not free and there are costs associated with not only taking the exam, but doing preparation for the exam. So yes, overall, I would recommend taking the SATs, but you know, you do have to look at your individual situation and make the decision that is best for you. So moving forward, what's next? You want to maximize your competitiveness, good grades, um, make you more competitive. 
everything being equal, if a coach has two school two students that they're looking at, and one student is a better academic um, performer, the coach will prefer that student. Um, do your research. Look at the schools and the programs you're interested in, and see if they have you know other scholarships available. See what their minimum grades are, and see if you are you know if the ways in which you can make yourself more competitive to that school. And of course, do keep in touch. Um, I know that Garvin will be passing on all of our information. I didn't put it on my slide, but Kiskity Consulting is my brand and you can always keep in touch with us afterwards. So thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm not sure if we're taking questions now or at the end, I will be guided by Garvin. Yeah, we, we'll take them at the end. We'll take them at the end. All right, no a, problem. And I sent out a correspondence saying we were kind of take them in the end so thank you very much abby um, no problem as usual very insightful and of course um i like all the i like the look of the two logos next to each other so <laughs> um so uh emmanuel so we we as, as i mentioned earlier uh we the idea of the con the, the webinar really and truly is to shed some insight for parents, student athletes, where do I start in this process, this journey? And um, and of course, Emmanuel will touch on when coaches can actually rec recruit athletes or start recruiting. So therefore it's not only a process of when you finish CXC uh, or, or keep, um, you need to be, it's preparation. Everything in life requires preparation. Uh, and therefore this opportunity, which is um, very far and wide apart, it requires a lot of preparation to be put into this process. We here to guide. So, um, so Manuel, Manuel is from, and of course I will, Manuel, leave you to, to introduce yourself, but so the floor is yours. And again, thank you for joining us this, this morning. I know you're one hour, um, in behind us. So we have to disturb your Saturday morning, but thank you for joining us. And of course, being able to impart some knowledge, uh, to yes. this viewers yeah thank you thank you uh good morning everybody and uh I'm, I'm glad we have a good turnout um a lot of we have a lot of information we're covering and um it can be overwhelming so um if you have any questions just you know hold those or if you want to put them in the chat uh, maybe we could clarify something you know as we're talking um so I'm going to talk from the high school experience um I am a school counselor at Central Gwinnett High School um, Coach uh, Sandy and I work at the same high school. Um, I'm a school counselor, and I spent the past nine years coaching football and golf, uh, um, girls golf to be exact. So, you know, we have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. I first want to start with the timeline. Um, this is what I always share with my athletes. And as Coach Garvin explained, um, you know, your a head coach's goal is always to make sure you have some scholarships, some athletes signing at the end of that season, at the end of that school year. And so the, the way you get all those athletes to sign, uh, whether it be two athletes, three, 10, or, you know, 20, is they have to follow certain steps. So this is one of the uh, – I'm lines that I, we present to our players um, and it starts in the eighth grade. So that means we do go to the middle schools to make sure that these kids, you know, your top athletes in your district are prepared and the parents are prepared as well. So um, the first thing we, we focus on our eighth graders is just, and, and I'm not going to read everything on here, um, you know, everything is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, we've covered a lot already. But the, one of my main things is working on studying and time management skills. So many middle schoolers, um, th they don't lack studying and time management. They just don't see the importance of it. Uh, they're, they're middle schoolers, and all they, all they know is they love the sport. They want to play it, and the grades will come along. And at times the grades are there and sometimes the grades aren't. And as parents and as professionals or overseers of these student athletes, you know, we have to sit them down and say, hey, you know, your grades come first, you're a student athlete. And if we drill that term student athlete into our 
our, prof our young professionals, I think, you know, they'll start to grasp and understand that, hey, I can't go to practice today. I got to go to study uh, to get extra help at the school instead of going to practice. And those are the sacrifices that we have to teach our kids at a young age so that when they do get to high school in their freshman year, you know, those things are normal, just like practicing, you know, two to three hours at the school and, and developing that athletic potential. They also have developed their academic potential too. And so going on along to the freshman year, these are some of the things that, you know, we want our um, athletes to look and to consider. Uh, we want them to start looking at the colleges that they potentially want to go to. Um, you know, if you have a golf player, for example, golf, not every college offers golf. Um, and, and that's golf is a more a popular sport, just like soccer and, and soccer is not offered at every college. So we put this back in the parents um, and players uh, lap as far as taking being accountable for researching those colleges that, you know, offer the sport that your 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 son or daughter want to play. And so. Um, some other things is, you know, reinforcing good grades are critical all four years of high school. Ninth, ninth grade is the most important year of a high schooler's um, academic process. You already know you're a good athlete, but you have to, you have to, again, focus on that study. And I can't say that. I can't preach studying and, and reaching out for help and letting those coaches know, hey, I have to sacrifice a practice day to make sure my academics are okay because that coach can't play you when it's time for the season to start if your grades aren't on point, if you didn't pass so many classes. And we'll talk about more of uh, that as, as that goes into your GPA and uh, your core GPA. So I'm just going to kind of browse through this real quick. So your sophomore year, we kind of focus on athletes um, creating a NCAA or, or NAIA um, account. Um, these are the websites right here. Um, and so you just create an account. The, the, the accounts are, they, they're usually like $70, um, but you may qualify for certain waivers um, depending upon your economic uh, uh, situation from your parents. So you would just need to talk to your counselor or your administrator um, to see if you qualify for waivers. Um, and when you set up these accounts, the colleges, they can look at the information you upload um, into your portal, uh, what sports you play. Um, they can look at your academics. They can start recruiting on that end. And then they'll start following you. As uh, Coach Garvin mentioned earlier, coaches' budgets have really changed. And so they can't get out to these schools as they used to. So they'll jump in the portal and start tracking you from there. Um, and so... Try not to wait too late to create that account. I know back in high school when I was, it was 1998, I didn't know anything about a portal. My dad told me my senior year, he was like, hey, you got to go ahead and create your NCAA account and all this eligibility. And I'm like, what? I was kind of blown away by it. And so I had a lot to do my senior year because I played baseball. And um, it's a lot. And so that's why we focus on your 10th grade year. And if you are committed to that sport, go ahead and create that account. We have that talk with the parent and the student to make sure they're committed so they can um, continue to development on that end. Um, taking your ACTs, SATs, I know Ms. Johnson mentioned that early. Um, there, we have some of our outstanding athletes. We, uh, we focus on the practice SAT, the ninth grade year. And then we we tell them, hey, mom, dad, you know, it's good to go ahead and get an official score in your 10th grade year. Start studying for that the first part of the school year and maybe by spring semester. Go ahead and take one of those SATs or ACT just to have a score. And so the thing is, you're 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 getting prepared for this test. Um, and like Ms. Johnson say, you know, the tests aren't really required, but at the same time, they're helpful. And so you're a good athlete, so you want to get all the information and all the help uh, that you can get when it's time for those coaches to start reaching out for you. Um, by your junior year, you know, you have to narrow down which colleges you really want to go to. And by your junior year, if you're a good athlete, you'll know maybe four or five colleges that have reached out to you and your parents. Um, 
but at the same time, things change, life happens. So continue your research on colleges because at the end of the day, life at the high school and life at the college continues. Athletics, they stay sometimes and sometimes they don't. And, so, and at times you have to prepare for your future. And so you research those schools based on what you want to study, what majors you are interested in, not just athletics. Athletics are great and everything, but at the same time, you have to be prepared for life at the college. Um, and one of the main things I want to point out is sending videos uh, to the colleges and coaches that you're interested in. It's great to have next level helping out doing these things. But at the same time, as parents and athletes, you do have to play your part and, um, you know, um, reach out to these colleges. And again, these are the, some of the things we, we practice with our um, athletes. And a lot of this kind of goes, it repeats itself year after year. Um, and let me go back to this talk more. Um, oh, freshman year was the transfer portal changed the recruiting process. Um, so you got a lot of college athletes already in college and they're not getting play time their freshman year. Now the transfer portal, I'm sure everybody's heard this now. Athletes, they see, hey, coaches didn't play me like, you know, this other plan. I'm just as good. So let me go in the transfer portal so I can transfer to another, uh, college. And so now you have these, uh, certified athletes in college. They already know a program. They already know a system. And now as a high schooler in your senior year, you're competing against this guy in the transfer portal. So, again, you know, you have to stand out and shine as a high school senior. You have to make sure your grades are on point. You have to make sure your your uh, film footage uh, for your games is on point. Um, and you have to stand out. That's why, you know, having those ACT scores, SAT scores, good recommendations like uh, Ms. Johnson mentioned. Um, you have to definitely stand out. And if things don't go your way and you have maybe just one potential offer in a school you've never heard of, you know, you take you you go into that uh, college and you, you, you look at everything. And if they meet your expectations and your standards, go ahead and apply. And, uh, you know, you, you take that scholarship and you go to that college and you and if after being in that college for your first year, if you see it's a good fit for you and, and the program, whatever sport is a great uh, program, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Everybody's not going to go D1 or D2. Uh, sometimes you have to go to a smaller college to make your way up to D1 and D2. And in that transition, I'm going to share uh, my other presentation, and um, it'll make a lot of this uh, make more sense. All right. Oh, scholarships by sport. Um, these are just some little facts. Only two percent of high schools are awarded athletic scholarships um each year. So that's a small amount. Um, so at the end of the day, we have to fall back on those academic scholarships, like Ms. Johnson said. If we can have a high GPA and we can earn, for example, Georgia, the state of Georgia gives every a uh, high school graduate, if you graduated with a 3.0 or higher, they'll give you Hope Scholarship. So Hope Scholarship is going to pay for 60, about 60% 60 of your tuition. And so that college coach who's recruiting you knows you have a 3.0 or higher, they're going to say, okay, um, we don't have to offer him full tuition. So full tuition for the year is what, maybe $8,000. That's less money, again, that they're having to um, bring you in as an athlete so you know they'll only pay what that 40 percent of that 60 percent that was paid leaving them more money to sign more athletes and so at the end of the day you know they want to build a program they want championships too and this is a way they get those uh athletes in by by spreading the money um around because you know the athlete that they recruited has good um academic standards um and so again this is a little timeline that kind of shows me uh, this is a little timeline again. So the timeline is very important. Again, I, I, I showed the timeline that starts in 
eighth grade. And this is another timeline on when you need to, again, register for the NCAA. That's the first step, you know, your sophomore year. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of these uh, numbers on here uh, by, by also, but I also want to make sure we, you know, protect our time that we have here today. Uh, so I'm going to go on to the next. And again, this is this shows you when you go to the NCAA site, what it looks like. Um, you click on that middle part, Manuel, register. Manuel, let me cut you there quickly. I don't think the we we stuck at um look look up look for college camps and clinks to attend good grades. Um so you're yeah, actually the timeline wasn't being shown. I don't sure if it's sticked or you stop sharing and reshare. Uh okay, okay. Um let me jump right here real quick. Your because it's like I say, this is a lot of information and it's a lot of good information. But anyway, so for division one qualifications to earn a division one scholarship, you have to have a 2.3 core GPA. All right. And that is your main thing um, for division two. You have to have a 2.2 um, core GPA and we say GPA is core. That's very important um, to start knowing about. So. Let me quickly show you this, and then we can I can hand it over. This is something um that we we track with our athletes. Um, this is our eligibility worksheet, and this is how we calculate the core. So we list this, and this is little detailed critical Manuel, stuff. Manuel, Manuel, we're still seeing. I think you need to stop sharing your original document because even when you pull up. The other document, uh, we're, we're not seeing it. Yeah, we're not seeing. So, put okay. in the comments saying, so, right. So, you, then whatever you were sharing, you could reshare it now. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry. Let me see. All right. Let's go back to you. So can you all see this now? Um, it's still sharing. Starting started sharing screen. It isn't up as it right. So we know seeing it. Yes, good. All right. Yeah, my Wi Fi is a little slow over here. All right. So division one again that shows that the GPA requirement needs to be at least a two point. Um, where did it is two point three core, and if we go to this is the red shirt requirement. Uh, if you're going to be a red shirt, so you have to have at least a 2.0. Um, and, and to be a red shirt, that means you're a great athlete and that college is willing to take that chance on giving you still a scholarship or a, a, a national letter of intent just to sign with that school. You have to be a big standout athlete to even be a red shirt nowadays. Uh, Division two, again, you have to have a 2.2. Core GPA, and then let's go to this other screen where I can show you where the GPAs all will make sense. Let's see. Oh, this is one of our, my players that we had back in the day. Let's see, that's the, I think the document is loading. Um, there it is. So this is our eligibility worksheet that we use here at Central. We type all the, the players' grades in from the ninth grade year. For example, we have English as first section. And so this is what colleges use to calculate your core. So they're going to tell you, okay, let us see, you know, send us a transcript. And when they want, when they tell you to send the transcript, they have a person on staff who is putting all your information in from your from your ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh, and twelfth grade of English to your math to your, you know, you need three years of math, um, four years of English. And they're putting those grades in, and they're putting the grades in, and they that equal to quality points. And here in the middle, after those grades are put in, it breaks down your core GPA. Like this young person is has a three point one core GPA, but I want to show you something. If I go into ninth grade and this person got a C, 
you see how that core GPA change. If I go here and I put a C, see that core GPA is going down and down. So that's why it's very important that we keep and and also um, make sure our academics are very important. So these are the subjects that they look at, math, science, history, and then you have additional electives, Spanish, um, geography. Um, they don't look at weight training. They don't look at golf. They don't look at the easy electives. So again, we have to hit those academic classes real hard, A's and B's. Um, if a C is what you have for a certain subject, if that's, if that's your best, that means you have to rebound and, and, and get an A in another core subject to offset that C. So these are some very important things. Um, they may not be the most fun things to learn about and to know about, but at the end of the day, they're very important. So again, to protect time, I know this is, um, I may be going over a little bit, but at the same time, um, if you have any questions um, in particular, just just let me know or let Coach know and we can answer those. All right, thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, good stuff. A lot, a lot to digest. A lot to digest. So, and and the idea is, uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We, what we're trying to do is really bring persons in the know. Um, so, so do not, do not feel, um, that you, that you can't, if you didn't grasp something right away, that you can't ask the question. And that's why we're here. Um, we ourselves continue to learn, um, learn about the systems, learn about, the, the, the requirements and, and, and continue to fine tune ourselves to be able to be the best um, organization, to be able to give the best advice to young aspiring athletes. I know um, I was just having a little sidebar with Abigail. So Abigail, if you want to jump back in now, um, I just want to bring back Abigail because she wanted to just uh, make mention to a few things and then we will start answering some of the questions that are popping up in the chat. Okay, so I just wanted you all to know, I know that, um, you know, Emmanuel, who did a great job, thank you so much, um, was referring to grade nine. And I just want you all to know the NCAA actually has a country by country document that translates what um, each country's requirements are. So right before Trinidad and Tobago, it's like Toga or something like that. But just want to just bring a couple of things to your attention so that you have a greater appreciation for what Emmanuel was sharing. Year nine is form three. So they are looking at your grades from form three, go forward. Form three, form four, form five, lower six, upper six, depending on when you're coming in. So if you think you have time, just know that the clock has probably already started ticking if you're in this in this um call, right? Um, In terms of your acceptable proof of high school graduation, you must have five or more CSEC passes. So if you can, they do consider it completed at form five, five or more passes in separate subjects, right? Or tier two is CAPE, which is two or more CAPE exams. And also, um, I know that Emmanuel was referring a lot to the GPA. Um, they have um they have the amounts of credits, they have course credits available, they have translations. And they have translations for CSEC. So a grade one is like a four. A grade two is like a three. A grade three is like a two, you know? And I don't want to talk about grades four, five, and six because we're not talking about those, right? Um, <laughs> and when it comes to CAPE, so if, you, if they give you your certificate, they actually are able to look at it and understand what they're looking at. So don't think they don't know. And when it comes to CAPE, the good news is for CAPE, they'll give you an A for two in CAPE because they understand CAPE is very hard. But um, again, you know, don't think that they don't understand our systems. Don't think that they don't have guides and translations. And don't think that you have all this time in the world because grade nine is form three. Okay, so the clock is ticking. The time has started. Your grades count. 
your attendance counts, your recommendations count. Um, so, you know, show up and do the best you can because you would hate that, you know, a coach really likes you but can't give you the opportunity because your grades are just not where they want to be, okay? So I just thought I would I'd give you guys a little bit of context for what grade nine means for um, in our context. So that would be it for me. And yes, this document, Um, if you contact Garvin, I'll make sure to forward this document to you. Uh, Abby, uh, before you go, there's a question from MJ in the group that says, uh, what is the average cost of SAT exams and TT? Also, how long before taking a test should the preparation be example, two months or four months? So the SAT exam costs 105 or 103 US dollars per sitting. Um, and average preparation, it depends, I would say, between two to three months is what's recommended for a first-time preparation. But as you go along, if you take it a second time, you may only need to go back in for a month. Um, so I would say, you know, take, like, in terms of my, of, of when to start and how long it takes, it also depends on the student. So you have to know your child. If your child, you know, has a specific weakness in math or English, then, you know, that they may need a little bit more time and a little bit more um, advanced preparation. But um, I would say the cost is, in turn, that it's 100 and, 100 and some change, so about 600 and something TT per sitting. And um, preparation should be between two to three months for the first time, of course, depending on your child. And of course, there is a, um, um, if you do it on your own or you in terms of, according to who you use for, for lessons or preparation, there's a cost associated with that, right? Yes. Good. Um, so the, another question coming in from MJ, and I will just read it for uh, for those who didn't read the chat. Um, further query on methodology. So for example, football and LP would come to football games and record it and develop stats for games. Question, or do, or do the athletes have to record their own games? Also example for performance data, does NLP provide the vest to collect or at least have to source? So, correct, so I'll answer the first part. The first part is, you could record um, and, and upload. Uh, of course, there is a cost associated with NLP or anybody, any videography team or NLP coming into video that we can. We do offer packages that we do offer packages that get you not just your recording, but your data, um, your profiling, and all of the recruiting elements to it that we assist with. So um, that is where. NLP plays the role um, in terms of from photography, videography, data capturing, um, strength and conditioning, all of those things are, well, what we call a la carte add-ons to, to, to what we provide. Uh, in terms of the data capturing, yes, we do have um, devices that will monitor uh, or start monitoring distance and, and those things that will get you where you need to be for 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 those coaches are looking for that kind of for, for that kind of stuff. So again, I don't is MJ is the entitled. I don't have the full names, but the idea is, of course, we could put any conversation once you're comfortable. Any questions that you feel to have, reach out to any one of us. I saw Lincoln is on, um, Coach Larry is on, myself, Mozart, um, and we will be able to answer any any of the questions. As mentioned, we are doing a few athletes. Uh, football athletes this year uh, in the in the secondary school league, both male and female. So um, we will take it from there. We could, uh, um, so next question from MJ. I'm not familiar with the NAIA football-wise. Is that level comparable to the NCAA Division One or Drupal level? Uh, I don't know if Coach Larry or uh, Emmanuel wants to jump in on that question. Is Regards NAI football wise, is that level comparable to or compatible to comparable to NCA Division One or the Juco level? Um, I'll answer, and I'm sure Coach Larry can answer that one too. Um, so you have great athletes on every level. It's just the recruiting and your academics that will get you to certain levels. If that and that helps, so Juco, you have a lot of kids who didn't. Um, have again a high GPA or they were at a small school and they weren't recruited as high as a outstanding popular school 
So they are uh, comparable. They just aren't in the, they aren't on TV a lot. They aren't promoted a lot, but they is is high um, athletic athletes at those schools just at like division one and division two II and division three um i think that's kind of the best way so you go where you can play if you go division one you have a lot of other high level athletes in front of you competing for that two or three or five star spot so am i going am i going to sit on the bench my first year or do i go division two or JUCO, where I know I can shine my first two years and then transfer to a uh, Division One or go to the draft. So I hope that helps. And and I want to answer and I want to add to that, uh, Emmanuel. The idea is really, and you touched on it, is where you get opportunities. The standard and level that is played um, is comparable. And, and I saw Janelle put it in the group to Division Two, Division Three, and CA double level. The idea is the opportunity um, getting in the system and making sure that you have the playing time and you can then be in a better position to showcase yourself, build more on your profile and get a better opportunity. Because it comes down to, as as, as Coach Manuel said, it, it's really about scholarships and budgets and opportunities. And therefore, you may get a, 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 a Juco willing to cover a full ride or Division two or Division three. Um, with much more budget for your skill set or your position versus that division one. But by the time you get in there and you do a one year in any one of those programs with the mindset that I am trying to talk, transfer, and of course the NCA has the transfer portal that is very active, very um, competitive. You just need to be able to make yourself accessible and of course promote and market yourself. Um, they have scholarship offers to NAI, right? So yeah, okay. So general is answering some of the questions. Gavin. Oh, Larry's on. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Gavin, can I jump in right here real quick? Yeah, you jump in for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, Larry Sandy. Um, I'm a member of the Next Level. I more mostly deal with the basketball um, part of Next Level because um, I've been a college coach, basketball college coach for like 13, 14 years now. Um, I'm at uh, Central Gwinnett High School right now with Emmanuel Rutledge, my guy right there. Um, just a little bit about um, JUCO and NAIA. NAIA, to go to NAIA, the, the qualifications are a little bit different. Um, if, if you can um, have your GPA, I think the GPA for NAIA is like, um, um, not GPA, but the SAT or the ACT is 18. No, the GPA, I think you can have a nine, 19. No, that's the SAT I'm talking about. I'm, I haven't been at, at NAIA for a while, but I think you can have a 19 um, in the SATs and you can get into NAIA or you can um, graduate in the top 50% of your class. That means like your whole class, the whole, like if you're in fifth form, in the whole of the fifth form, if you graduate in the top 50% of that, you can be eligible to play NAIA basketball immediately. Um, JUCO is a little bit different. The SAT and stuff doesn't matter a lot. But um, if you graduate from high school, you have a great chance of getting into the um, junior college to to play. Actually, we just um, next level we sent um, five athletes to junior colleges this year, and that was a major requirement that they um, graduate from graduated from high school. Um, JUCO, like um, what we think about JUCO, what I personally think about JUCO, it's a little bit um, easier, especially with athletes in the Caribbean who are not being recruited. Um, and that's what Next Level is. Next Level, we are trying to close the gap between the athletes and these colleges. Um, I have a lot of contacts um, in basketball, so I'm using my contacts. So we're just trying to close that gap. Sometimes junior college isn't bad. Like Garvin was just saying, um, if you're good enough, you play one year in JUCO, you guys have some good stats. Definitely, you're going to go somewhere else um, and see the ability, Division Two, Division One. Okay. Um, but that's not a bad, that's not a bad idea. Um, NAIA is the same thing. If you can go in and you can prove yourself, you can compete at the NCAA um, um, standard, you can do that. So I just don't want anybody to um, be deterred and thinking it's only, um, only NCAA. 
the other thing with JUCO, like older older people, like if you're 21 or 22, um, you can get into a junior college. Whereas NCAA, um, they got an age stipulation. I think you um, is. I know um, Emmanuel might be able to help me out with this. Uh, I don't think I can, but I think you um, is 24. You can't enter a junior uh, NCAA school um, when you're over 24 to play athletics. Um, Emmanuel, I think, uh, I'm not sure on that, but I think when I was at Division One, um, we couldn't um, recruit kids at a certain age. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that age requirement either, uh, Coach. Um, and I, I think once you're, it's just like the transfer portal. Um, once you're in the transfer portal, yeah, you can transfer to school from school to school, but as far as I'm just not uh, sure about that one. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll get that information and get it to Gavin where we can get it out to the, to the players by the age limit. But what I'm really trying to say is that a, a junior college is not bad if you have the um, athletic ability and maybe if your academics are not um, where you want it to be, a junior college is the best way to get into the system because um, you can go um, to different um, levels from there. So um, I just wanted to, to, to let everybody understand that I know we is an NCAA uh, forum, but we have tons and tons and tons of um of ways to get into to, to US colleges. So that's um just to jump back in there, Larry. Um, I think there is a lot wider opportunities and a lot more opportunities for Caribbean kids and 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 Trinidad and Tobago kids because a question by MJ. I wish MJ could tell me their name, but MJ question was um the basketballers that are in the college from the profile shown in the earlier slides, how has a sporting adjustment been for them coming from Trinidad to the college and what challenges, pros and cons from their feedback? So best before you get into that, Larry, the idea is um some of our kids locally, they would have gotten the opportunity based on skill set and some, and again, as Coach Larry touched on, is about academics. Um, I think the the idea is getting yourself in the system using uh, that junior college NEI route. And one thing that we have done or we continue to do under the NLP umbrella is even the kids that are out there, we manage those kids. Um, and we continuously, weekly follow up on their activities, follow up on their academics, follow up on their um, what they're doing during the week, what kind of personal training they're doing because at the end of the day they're not only representing themselves they're also representing the next level brand so we try to because at the end of year one our intention for at least two or three of those athletes uh, are ready to look now that they have gotten into the system to see how best we can negotiate and get them into um i wouldn't want to say better programs or other programs um, that they could further their educa uh, education and more importantly their skill sets. Uh, Larry, you want to touch on the on in terms of the adjustment? How was the adjustment being from Trinidad and Tobago to the college uh, system for those athletes? Yeah, well, the adjustment goes uh, by different by individuals uh, depending on your your preparation, depending on where what school you go to. Um, I love, and I can talk about basketball. I know soccer and track is way different from basketball, but like we, I can use the experiences like the kids we have out in basketball in basketball right now. I think our kids are having a little. We're we're having a little um problem adjusting to the speed of the game, and um that is something that with the, with our twenty twenty four recruits we want to talk about and we want to um see if we can um. Talk to them and see if we can adjust that. Um, the speed of the game. Um, I spoke to Coach Ben um, yesterday. He said um, the kids they are they are coming along well, and he's trying to prepare them for 2024. Um, as you all know, we got um, three kids from Trinidad at these schools. Um, so it's 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 I, I, to be honest with you all, um, it's it's a little bit different when you leave Trinidad and Tobago and you come to um, to the U.S. Because it's, it's going to be, um, the, your mindset is going to have to be different. The training is going to be different. Um, most of the times we in Trinidad, our coaches are, are amateur coaches where they just volunteer to coach. And in the U.S., these coaches, it's their job. 
you know, they don't win basketball games, they're going to lose their job, their family is going to lose. They can't eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we say over here, they can't eat. But um, so now you need you need to you need to have that mindset and that work ethic in order to really, really, really um make an impact on the team. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make an impact. If a coach gives you a scholarship, that means he, he, he sees something in you. He's interested. He thinks you can make his team better. Okay, when you go out there, you got to prove to prove that point. Gavin, real quick, I want to touch on this. Somebody asked, um, and, and I hear similar to Division Two, Division Three. This is something I, I feel to mention. Um, some of these um, NAIA schools, um, Division II schools, junior college schools, okay? So these schools, basically, they have, like, sometimes they have eight full scholarships. What I mean by eight full scholarships, that means the school gives them eight full scholarships where they can scholarship eight athletes fully. But if we can see that on a team, we can have 12 to 15 kids. So what the coaches usually do, they would give their top recruits. Let's say the top four recruits, they will give them a full scholarship. So now they are they are they are left with four more scholarships. So now they gotta break up those four other scholarships and give it to the other eight kids. So most of the times you don't get a full ride going in the door unless you are really stud, like Emmanuel was saying, like you're a stud, like you're six ten and you can really work. You're gonna get a full scholarship. So most of the times. These scholarships, you're gonna have to pay. You're gonna have to pay something. Might be not not a lot. Sometimes they might have enough to give you um, a full ride. You might have to pay for books. Okay. Sometimes you might have to pay something extra and for books. So I want you all to to know this. Um, NAIA and Division Two is not particularly full scholarships. Okay. Sometimes you're gonna have to pay something because at most Division Two schools they don't have twelve full scholarships or fifteen full scholarships. So I know everybody can do the math. So if they have 10 full scholarships, that means some people will have to pay something. And uh, I want you all to understand this. So not every time you hear someone gets a scholarship, that means it's 100% paid. Yeah. I just uh, want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. So um, I just want to, so before we wrap up, I wanted to bring in, as mentioned when I started, I wanted to bring back in um, our strength and conditioning coach, uh, Lincoln, Lincoln Charles, or who's spearheading our strength and conditioning program, um, to be able to to just share some insight into our 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 program as well, um, and just to wrap up on the on MJ. So there is an adjustment. Just to wrap, there is an adjustment that our Caribbean athletes have to make. But we would have gotten actually some scholarship opportunities for some Surinamese kids who also um fell into their system. Uh, pretty well and and actually the coach there is actually looking for more kids and and as I said we we continue to mis massage and build our own network uh, as next level performance because that's our job that's what we're here to do and that's what we we are presenting to you, everyone that we are going to create a network that uh, for what, what I know and what we have got, always known about football and track and field we do have um athletes who have gotten football scholarships in in in, in good grabs, especially out of the Fatima Skivasis, Benedict St. Mary's, you name them, because they have both academics and ability to play. Uh very similar to track and field. We have had division one, division two, uh, in terms of LS. We we just had, I mean, one of our first first athletes would have been um before even really opening our doors is 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 uh, Aaron Antoine, who went off to Kansas State University, who was a board basketballer and a track and field athlete, too, um, is doing exceptionally well. So, um, there is an in everything there's an adjustment, especially moving. So from off off the field is con managing the maturity of the athlete, um, making sure that they're now responsible and they get into practice. Um, all of those things require adjustments that we try to manage and assist on a day-to-day -day kind of weekly basis. So um, that being said, I'll hand you over to, to Lincoln for, we just have about 11 minutes again. Hopefully Lincoln is about 10 and then we can come back and wrap up. All right, over. Lincoln, over to you. So hi, morning everyone. And all protocols observed, Abigail, Emmanuel, Coach Larry, Coach Gavin, and also Mozart. You all are hearing me clearly, right? Yes, yes, we are. Right, so my presentation today basically is gonna deal with giving you an insight of what 
is required for you. You want to see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. And I just click on presenter mode. Okay, so we at Next Level would have over the year captured data in terms of athletes and being able to help them and guide them along, being able to better their version, a better version of themselves. And this is important for each and every one of you because Abigail talk about the anatomy of statistics. I'm going to talk about the anatomy of you know, strength conditioning and body mechanics and movements. And Emmanuel mentioned that you should go back to your coaches and work along with your coaches to be able to be a better version of yourself. And Coach Larry and Coach Gavin kind of highlighted that and reinforced those tools. But how can we do that? Right? Um, this data that I would have collected um, over the period of time is just basic standard. Now, these are the basic for basketball, football, track and field, and soccer, because football in America is rugby. So we have football, but um, Trinidad, we say rugby. And then we have soccer. And these are basic requirements to enter. Again, if you decide that you want to be minimal and just reach the basic required standard, and your SAT is probably just basic requirement standard, what is going to make that college coach pick you over that person who's living in that country, has the same score of you, and has the same numbers as you? So you have to look at your numbers, because the numbers also is very important for you to be able to get that, that scholarship. So the data I'm giving you here is just the basic requirement. And I think that don't ever try to be basic. Always try to be the best you can be to help you get the best opportunity that there is out there. Right? So we're going to start with football. And a footballer um, or rugby, a lineman supposed to be able to bench press 1.5 to 2 times their body weight. So if you are 150 pounds, you should be able to bench press two times that or one and a half times. So we're looking at 250 to 300 pounds that you should be able to bench press. And that's important for you to understand the level you need to be at, the professional side of things, along with your academics, taking time off to study, also coming and work really hard in the gym, right? And then yeah, you have your skill coach who's going to teach you the skill, right? So, and then there are the skills position where it's one to 1.5 times. So I'll just give you the example of the person who is um, 150 pounds. So you can just do the numbers yourself. And I really hope that most of you have a pen and paper and not just letting the information fly in and out your ears because then there will be lost information. So, you know, sometimes we will listen, we will hear, but there are a lot of ways we could learn. We could see, we could listen, we could write, and then we regurgitate what we learned, right? So. A rugby bench press that's basic standard that you should have to be able to get even the attention of a coach to say listen i might be interested in this person and then we had the 40 meter dash skills position should be under four seconds 4.5 seconds and a linesman is five seconds right so you know when you go back to um if you are rugby athlete in here and you go back to the training ground you want to try to work on your numbers and bring down those numbers to the best you can be so you could get that, give yourself that opportunity, right? So it's only because we have 11 minutes I'm just trying to run too fast, right? Um, skill position in rugby, you should be able to have a full a 30 inch vertical leap. So one on the ground and you go up in the air, from the bottom of your foot to the ground should be 30 inches. And that's just basic college requirement standard. Linesman, 24 inches, right? Because Think about that person trusting that ball in the air and you have to be running down the line and leap into space and catch that ball in space. So that's really important for you to know your numbers, right? So we have football. I know we might have some footballers on here, right? Um, they said, sorry, we still on rugby. So we have the squat, being able to two to 2.5 times your body weight and still 1.5 to two times, right? The linesman would need more Force ground reaction, so that's why they require to be able to have do more force production and that puts a person who on the field and running and doing spin agility, they will have to lift like that. Right? So yeah, it's important for you to understand the numbers and how that affects you in the position that you play. And then we go to basketball. Basketballers should again, just like 
uh, rugby and football and track and field, everybody basically has the same benchmarks, you know, um, 1.5. When you're when we're looking at a 1.5, that 1.25 to 1 ideally is about 180 pounds. Um, if you ever see the basketball combined to enter the college, they put 180 pounds on the bar and you see how much reps you could push. All right. So that's important for you to know, do your own research and put yourself in a competitive position as a disadvantage by not having the knowledge. So the 40 meter dash, again, um, the 40 meter dash is not really required. It, it is not, but they still use, sometimes they do 30 or they do 40. So you should train in that, but I'm sure you all will have lean agility tests, 5, 10, 5, or even the T-test when it comes to speed and agility and these different things. So again, if you're not putting these things into your training program, I suggest that you start to give yourself that competitive edge. Right, so as with basketball continues again, the minimum requirement for a guard is 20 inches and for forwards and centers, 24 inches, right? Now, again, just think about it. Yes, I'm looking for a 20 inch or a 24 inch, but there are people who jump in and I think Coach Larry and Coach Garvey could come in here. There were persons jumping like 28, 30, 32 inches, right, Coach? When we went out to Suriname and even coming back in Trinidad, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Right, yeah. right? So don't mind these numbers here are the basic requirement numbers. You got to think about, and, and Coach Larry said it, that people would be hungry. They're hungry because they have millions of athletes trying to get a college scholarship. So they are going beyond the threshold, and that's where you need to put your mind that this is just a basic requirement, but I need to have more. I need to do more in order to give yourself that competitive edge. All right, so again, just like um, rugby, basketball, the squat is 1.5 times your body weight, right? And just know your body weight and be able to bench um, squat that amount of load, right? Endurance, right? Um, endurance athletes, well, I have soccer here, so I just have a little typo, but ideally it's supposed to be basketball. And some of the tests that we use is the you know, test or the deep test. Uh, Right now, they kind of move away from the deep test because that's just constant running and not really specific to the basketball tool. So you find they will use the test. Yes, you run for a period of time, you rest for 10 seconds, you run again, you rest for 10, you run again. Uh, you have to train in that environment. I'll try to come close it in order for you to understand and appreciate what the coaches are looking for and put yourself in that environment to get the best opportunity again to get that, that, that scholarship. Right, track and field, uh, 100 meter, your time should be under 10 seconds of men and under 12 seconds of women. So I know we have some track athletes, I see Kira Charles here. Um, and these are some of the numbers, basic numbers that are, and they are at least who head into Carifta, coming out with um, under 11 in women and men just clocking just above 10, some of them just under the 10. I'm talking about 17, 18, 19 year olds. So if you try to train in this zone, which is the basic requirement, they will give you the standard, and you try to stay there, you are doing a disservice to yourself. So you should try to be competitive. Look at the people that are wrong you, who are your competitors, and try to match that with every training session that you do. Right, 200 meters, 22 seconds for men, 25 seconds for women. Right, jumpers, um, high jump, six feet for men, five feet for women. Long jump, over 23 feet for men, over 20 feet for women. And these are just the basic standard requirements to even get the attention of a coach. Because a coach might say, listen, this was not good academics. They're doing the numbers, the basic, but here, well, I could take them. They might be able to get a, a full scholarship as Coach Larry um, Emmanuel was saying. And they could work with you because your academics on point, they seem to be a disciplined person. When they look at your profile, you have a good training regime. All right, I could take this person. I can make an exception to the rule. As a post up person who might be doing a, a better number than you, but they don't have a good academic. So it should have balance in everything that we do. Right? Choose shot put over 50 feet for men, over 40 feet for women. Discuss 150 feet for men, over 150 feet for women. And those are just the basic numbers again. Right? Distance running, uh, a 5K under 50 minutes for men, women under 18 minutes, 10K. 
under 32 minutes for men, under 37 minutes for women. So if you know you're not close to any of these numbers, I suggest you rethink, reevaluate, change your lens and your focus, and start to focus in the right direction. Right, soccer, bench press again, 1.25 1, 1. of your body weight, or your extreme dog bottom. Right, and these are just basic standard requirements that you need. Uh, 40 meter dash, right, um, which is critical. Again, what they look at is your know, test, pain agility, at Eleanor's, those same different tests they would use. So try to get yourself familiar with them. Again, um, in football, they look for a 20 inch vertical leap, um, and it is also helps improve explosiveness and agility. So if you think that you are jumping high on the ground and it's not specific to football, it's not specific to rugby, it's not specific that you are wrong. And that is called power output. The more power you can produce, you can transfer it into any other sport because you have power, you can transfer power. Yeah, um, squat, again, 1.5 body weight. These are just the basic requirements. And as I conclude, right, endurance, um, you know, test, beep test. They will use the, they will use your test in football and they will use beep test. But again, they are moving in the direction of when you look at the sport, the sport doesn't be constant running up and down. So they created the yoga test where you would run for a period of time, you'll get rest, high intensity, low volume rest, high intensity, low volume rest. Those are some of the things that they would use. Right? So this is just a benchmark and just a general guideline uh, for the level of competition specific requirements for the training program. The athletes should work with their coaches and build realistic goals in your position that you play, right? Because your position also requires you a different level of threshold training, right? Additionally, as well, a real rounded program that includes speed, agility, strength, and skill development is critical for the success, the success of college athletes. So I end with my presentation. I hope that it was a little fast because of time, but I do hope that you all would have got out and captured some things out here that might be able to help you. Um, marry the statistic part, marry what Coach Emmanuel said, and also take into consideration that your strength and conditioning also plays an integral role in helping you be optimal and give you that competitive to get a college scholarship. So I end here and I hand you back over to Gavin. Oh, right. one more thing before I close. Um, Dr. Dr. Uh, Joe was on, and you would have seen in the video we would have had the athlete who was doing basketball, he was shooting. Um, I must give recognition to Dr. Joe and her team. Uh, they actually provide us with the cut, and we are testing that. I'm using the cut, you know, in all sport right now, so we can actually help you better what you do in this sport, along with all the other elements we have that will help you be optimal. So I thank you, and I hand you back over to Gavin. All right, so Lincoln, you could stop sharing there, right? Good. So, I mean, thank you very much, Lincoln. I know that that piece was a little impromptu, but needed. Uh, we're just about two or three minutes over. Um, I want to also just say that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to understanding the data of what we could capture and how we could capture it. I know um, Sarah in the group asked, what about volleyball stats um, for volleyball players? Again, we we could provide that information uh, in terms of what are the requirements and the basic requirements um, for college uh, and, and those requirements, as well as some of the benchmarks that you should be utilizing as personal from a stat specific uh, stuff. We again, we could come in and do the only way we could we could assess you is if we come in and we have a con further conversation and we come in as part of your kind of management team and capture data, do your stats, do, which are sport specific, right? So volleyball, if you're talking volleyball, football, basketball, um, track and field, whatever you name it, we will come in and physically do it. Uh, so that, again, it comes down to your profile building. When you build your profile, so a volleyball coach who's coming on our platform knows exactly what he's going to look for. Um, a football Coach who's coming on our platform knows exactly what he's looking for. What are the what are the check boxes that he are, he's looking for, and therefore we have to kind of mirror the thought process so that we are going to continuously continue to define our our needs and 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 coaches wants in terms of what their requirements are, so that we can make sure 
that we bridge that gap. And the intention, and I'll wrap it by saying, or when the intention of next level, next level performance, and our group is really to bridge that gap um, through data, through digitalization, to be able to put our athletes in front of coaches, as many coaches as possible. There are no guarantees that we could get scholarships, as I mentioned prior. We do have a list of athletes who we have identified that we are going to start putting in front of coaches um, and building all their profiles, which we have already done, and I should say completing their profiles and putting them in front of coaches. That's the idea. I want to reiterate, if you haven't done so as yet, go up on the website, it, um, nextlevelperformancett.com, or download the Android app and start building your profile today. From there, we will communicate with you. We will have some one-on-one -on -one conversations. If not myself, Coach Lincoln, uh, or Coach Larry, we'll, we'll, one of us will call you um, and have some conversations to get a better understanding of you, the athlete, you, the parent, what you want for your child, what you want as an individual goal, and see how best we could get you there. Um, that's, that's what we're working towards because the intention is to give Caribbean athletes, Trinidad and Tobago and Caribbean athletes, um, that opportunity that is there and is knocking. Now that the digital forefront is, is, is being used by colleges and universities across USA and Canada. Uh, that being said, I want to say thank you very much, of course, to Abigail Johnson. Um, of her insight, she will share she will share the content that um especially the NC and, and and in terms of the CSEC Cape grades and, and make sure that we get that one to you. Um of course Manuel thank you for taking the time for joining us today. Um insightful stuff uh, again understanding what it is requirements for uh just basic requirements to get into division one division two NIA uh, and of course to, to my the next level team, we are here, um, and to everyone who has joined us and spend the time here with us, we are here to assist. Um, so feel free to contact us, check us on our website, email us. You would have received all, all of you would have received emails directly from me. Feel free to reach out to me. We will set up those one on one calls. If you need SAT, we will connect you with Abby. Make sure that you're in right hands because, as we mentioned, those grades. Uh, even more important than the playing aspect. Um, uh, so yes, you could play, but if your grade's not there, you, you can't get the opportunity. And when you get the opportunity, you need to upkeep those grades. So blessed Saturday morning to everybody. Thank you very, very much for joining us this morning. This is just one of many conversations that we will be having from a next level standpoint. We do have a football combine that is happening on the 11th and 12th. Um, which will see some of the top 17, 18, 19-year-old boys and girls come together, similar to what we would have done in basketball in Suriname and Trinidad. We're doing it here. We'll be doing it in Barbados. We'll be doing it in Guyana. Um, the idea is to, again, capture data from our basis, do the combine so that when we speak to coaches, we know that we're selling somebody that we have verified and verified information that happens at the 11th and 12th um again if you're interested um we reach out to us directly and the, that information will go to the general public on monday but really and truly we have we have kind of handpicked those at least that we want to have in that in that combine because we do have some athletes who are already with next level we have already have some athletes who have engaged with next level. There are some athletes who are on this call who have showed the interest, and therefore, we, we there's room for others. We are only taking twenty athletes, twenty male, twenty female, and again that allows us to streamline and put athletes out for the 2024, 23, 24 calendar cycle. Um, check out. Don't forget follow our Instagram, follow our Facebook. Next level performance, TT. Share the content. We always write a lot of articles. So take a take a read. It's always information that is important to this journey. Um, we're not just putting it out there for putting it out there's sake. The intention is to inform and educate and inspire our young um, student athletes and parents to make sure that they they they, they 
get the opportunity that they, they so require. So that being said, thank you very much, everybody. Have a blessed one. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the Saturday. See you all in the next one and reach out to us as soon as possible. We're waiting on your call. We want to hear from you. Make sure and pick up the phone. Send us an email. Send us a pick up and call us. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye-bye.